Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models and welcome to a new step by step that we're doing here at Genesis Models. It is going to be the Hobby Boss 148 scale TBF 1C Avenger. Um, now this kit um, is going to be done in, as I say, a step by step format. So we're going to be guiding you through building this kit. It's going to be of an intermediate level as well. So basically anything basic we're going to leave out. We're going to assume that you know how to glue stuff and cut stuff off the sprues and stuff. So we ain't going to film that just to speed things along. With this particular build, um, in, in all honesty, please comment down below, but I am umming and ahhing whether to do um, a folded or non-folded configuration, whether to have the torpedo or have bombs I'm not quite sure how to go about it um, feedback let me know and I'll see about building in that configuration to be fair I've never done the wings folded before really because I've never really liked it but I've never taught it so it might be interesting to do that um, I'm going to try and keep it sort of straightforward but I, I, I do want to try out some sort of new weathering techniques using oils in the weathering state so hopefully that will be interesting um, please also go visit genesis models website because we have all the videos there we have the forum great bunch of blokes over there we have the store and everything and it just helps support genesis models and keeps the lights on and all that kind of good stuff now here in episode one i've already started i'll just show you what we are to expect in episode one. First off this kit um, by the way i've just done a inbox review of it so you know go check that out um, if you want to see the inbox review but basically it looks like a good kit but eject pin marks are a bit of a pain with it so we've started taking care of them and in episode two we'll um, sort of probably finish them off but in this episode we really do sort of take a look at doing this lovely bit of engine here with natural metal finishes buffable paints doing pigments and stuff and sort of making these nice rusty exhausts on there um, and that should get us nicely done for episode two so time to now shut up and get some building done. We're going to kickstart this step by step off with basically what seems to be the major problem with this kit and that is ejector pin mark so first ejector pin mark i'm going to show you a couple of different ways now the first ones you might come across are ones like this if you sort of feel them they don't feel deep it's just more of a mark than sort of like uh, a recess to it right these are quite sort of simple you just want to plain and simply and this is a nice area there's no detail around it as well so this is a an easy one to deal with we can just plain and simply sand away at this now I'm just using a nice cheap nail file right you know for stuff like this it's pretty coarse right nice and cheap and pretty quickly we can sort of sand away at this plastic to the point where you can virtually almost not see anything there All right so I'm just sanding I'll get the one done pretty good that one looks pretty sort of gone now as you can see uh, but the sanding stick because it's a coarse sanding stick it's going to leave behind some nasty scratches so this is where we sort of just kind of like get out some sort of finer sanding sticks now I do use um, you've got the flurry models um, sanding sticks here you've got all sorts of grits and stuff but you basically come down the grits go into like a medium grit then a fine grit right just so as the plastic then starts to turn into and look you know like the rest of the plastic nice and smooth All right so I'm not going to bore you with that because I'll you know there's a medium grit and hopefully you can kind of see that sort of taking shape now and sort of disappearing nicely I'll go down to a, a nice fine one and it'll look all good however we've got um, this is probably one of the nastiest pieces out of the lot I mean we've got all this detail all around it and you know <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit tricky I want to sort of highlight say um, you know these eject pin marks they are recessed right so we could sand at it but we're going to be sanding away quite a bit of plastic there's detail around it will kind of destroy it so this is where we need to do a bit of filling uh, it's not such a bad idea to get out maybe a bit of Tamiya masking tape Right, so if I take this one as an example here, we've got a bit of detail right next to this ejector pin mark. Right, so I'm gonna actually put just a little bit 
of Tamiya masking tape just to cover that up so when we fill and sand we should hopefully save the detail. Right now a good one for this is um, Squadron Products, it's their green putty. All right, just getting out a spatula, we're just going to just plain and simply fill this up. Now when it comes to doing stuff like filling, right, um, it isn't a case of let's just fill it and then let's just sand it. Now I want to be as careful as possible when applying this filler. Right, I don't want to get it on any detail as much as I possibly can. All right, now with the filler, you know, that there has appeared to have kind of filled in the actual ejector pin mark, but what you want to do is, you know, let that dry. I mean, for the first coat, I kind of normally leave it to dry for a couple of hours, to be honest. I mean, you should leave it long, but I'll leave it to dry for a couple of hours. I'll give it a light sanding, but then I'll put a second coat on top Right, because the first coat, um, you know, is going to shrink. Because once it cures, maybe the next day, it's going to shrink, and you're going to see that eject pin mark again. So I just like to kind of a couple of hours, give it a bit of a sand, put a second coat on, and then leave that for probably maybe 24 hours, and then basically you sand away at it just the way I just kind of showed you just with sanding but you know because we're getting into these sort of nasty areas where there's detail around it it's kind of coming in with a nice fine sanding stick which actually um, a, a good one I'm going to do a, a product review on these it's the ammo sanding sticks and they do have these really skinny sanding sticks right they're mega mega skinny right um, and these ones are going to be perfect for this kind of stuff right um, imagine this one one's filled we can easily get in there and just sand that perfectly and sand there as well uh, but I'm not going to bore you with kind of sort of like a bit of basic sanding there you know work down the grits uh, but we'll leave that to dry there is another one as well this one is probably the worst kind of um, ejector pin mark you could come across it's the one right here if we bring you right in we've got an ejector pin mark smack bang on some detail um, in a situation like this right it's it's basically we need to get doing some scratch building so what I would do here is kind of just accept that this detail is going to have to go I mean to fill in there and sand these little bits and keep the detail it's potentially going to be um, easier just to let's just remove this detail Right, as little as possible, obviously, but I'm just going to remove all this. Right, if we can just score it away with our blade here. Um, probably a good idea, get out your iPhone and to actually take a picture before you score this away, just to sort of help. And I'll just scrape it at a 90 degree angle just to kind of almost sort of sand the rest of that away. All right, and then we come in with our squadron putty and we can now fill in this eject pin mark just like so. All right, and then we need to just leave that to dry. And I'll show you the next bit once we've let that dry. But while we wait for that to dry, we've got some nice natural metal finishes to do on all these lovely little engine parts that we've got. So all I've done now is I've just basically primed these up black. When it comes to doing stuff like natural metal finishes, generally, right, not all the time, but black is a good primer. It sort of brings out your natural metal finishes that little bit better. So they're all nicely primed. We're going to use these. These are cool paints here. We've got some dark iron. This is by Mr. Metal Color. It's two. 14. Um, now these are buffable paints which is rather rather cool but they are also lacquer based paints. Um, if you've only got one airbrush, uh, if you've got two airbrushes fantastic, I, you know you can have an airbrush specifically for lacquer based paints but just in case you haven't, right, um, before I actually start doing any sort of spraying when I've, um, because we've, I've been using um, acrylic based paints which are basically water based paints, I like to sort of give my 
airbrushed a little bit of a clean with some lacquer based thinners right just a little bit of a clean just to sort of stop any sort of cross contamination or anything like that um, all i'm doing here is i poured it in the color cup and then i'm sort of pinching the nozzle end and just gurgling it up so you can just see it's sort of nicely almost sort of cleaning itself up inside there then we sort of turn the color cup upside down clean it out this way because we don't want any nasty big gunky bits sort of being sprayed through our nozzle end and blocking it up all right so now we've got our airbrush thinking lacquer based paints uh, what we also want to do is want to get our air pressure down so i'm just going to bring my air pressure down to you know around about maybe 10 to maybe 13 psi right because we don't need so much air pressure with this stuff right now it is gonna get a little bit messy when we try and pull this in here but we'll get a a nice bit in there get a, i always have a um, kitchen paper towel on standby because it just always seems to flow down the color cup like so all right so we put our lid on um, probably a good idea to put a kitchen paper towel down as well and then we're going to spray one of these up now these are really cool right they do dry really quick so we can move along with this but nice and simple let's just check see that we're flowing nicely and then we just want to put a nice light sort of misty coat on to start with nothing fancy kind of all over this one's quite a complicated shape so you need to make sure we're we're getting it in all the nooks and crannies and i've just put a nice light misty coat on there to start with now what i'm gonna do cut to air just by pressing down the trigger and just drawing it off lacquer base so it'll dry really really quick now we can put on a normal light coat right not a misty coat we could put a nice light coat down where it actually starts to look like the paint's going down now what you'll notice straight away really is that it's looking rather um, dark and sort of dusty not really the color we're after and actually i need to whack some more paint in here just put some more paint in there um you, you'll get through this stuff quite a lot it is a little bit expensive and two pounds something a pot right um but it is good good stuff it is definitely worth worth the money so i'm just making sure that i've just nicely sprayed this all around you know and it's looking like it's pretty much absolutely everywhere now i'm just going to leave that to dry just for a little bit i mean really maybe like five minutes i mean it does dry really really quick and then we'll do the the exciting side to this and the exciting side is where we buff it up so i'm just getting a nice cloth nice clean well cleanish sort of cloth so cloth i always sort of use for this kind of stuff anyway and what we're going to do is we start by just lightly rubbing at this all right and i want to bring you in so you can just see the magic sort of happening as i'm just sort of lightly rubbing at this as you can see right it's almost as if you got this dark sort of powdery um sort of dust on top of the color that we've been spraying which is quite interesting but what it does it gives you so much sort of um cool sort of look to this because if we rub at it and rub at it right we're gonna get rid of more of this black sort of dust and soot right and you're gonna see more of this nice shiny natural metal finish but if we lightly rub at this because this is an engine right i mean it's gonna look dirty right and we're going to end up sort of all the raised areas right we can sort of just shine up right but all the recess areas are actually going to have this nice bit of a dirty dusty sort of look to it and as you can see looking really really cool now this is a bit of a complicated shape and you might not be able to get the cloth into all the areas now I've been lightly rubbing at it, but as you can see, as I'm going along, I'm sort of getting, I'm rubbing a bit more and a bit more at it. Um, and so as you can just get it just right. Now I'm just gonna get out a cotton wool bud, cause this is a nice way of sort of, we've got all these little hard to reach places, right? That we can now sort of 
get into all these nooks and crannies and sort of rub these as well so you know we haven't got any sort of blank spots or anything right and basically you know I mean I've got to do a load more to it but as you can see you know it is looking pretty pretty cool that's a nice bit of engine detail um, as I say in some spots you can really really rub at it maybe I could sort of maybe try and show you a little bit if I just kind of rub it one little bit quite a bit as you can see I rub at this one little area and it really sort of shines up all natural metal finish as you can see look at that it looks I don't know if you can see that with naked uh, with the camera but as you can see it really sort of gives it a nice shiny metal finish um, if that's what you're after but I'm not after that I'm doing that for your benefit but um, you know a light rub gives us a nice sort of good engine looking bit but you know in some areas you can really sort of buff them up as you can see now I'm going to go off and I'm going to do that to pretty much all our pieces here but I'll probably come across and use their 213 which is stainless steel I do believe um, for probably these front bits of it because if you look at some reference photos um, you know look at which ones look a bit sort of different metal finishes and whatnot the um, exhausts here I'm probably going to still do them a natural natural metal finish as a base but I want to rust this this up like a nice rusty sort of exhaust on there um, which I'll show you how to do that later but I'm gonna crack on spraying this up getting it all rubbed down and looking cool um, and hopefully our um, ejector pin marks will be dry just while our ejector pin marks are still drying, right, we're going to continue with the engine. We're going to, uh, we're going to add some nice pigments here and make this look all nice and rusty. Uh, the way I kind of do it is, I mean, it's a bit of an artistic license sort of kind of putting down pigments, but I do start off with our base colour. So I'm just getting some water on the end of a paintbrush, right? Uh, makes it nice and easy. We're going to start off with some light rust. I'm using ammo here, which is there. Uh, 3006 right and all I'm going to do is kind of get a nice bit on a, on a paintbrush all right we've got a, a palette just here and we're just going to sort of get a nice big load in there and then what I want to do is I just like to just start off with that bit of water on the paintbrush and sort of make a nice paint a nice paint to a milky consistency all right and we're just going to paint this on to start with in all fairness, that's a little bit too thick. We don't want it to be too thick. You know, we don't. I don't like to sort of build up my little bit of a texture. You know, I mean, the thing is, we're building up textures with uh, things like pigments. Is you can go a little bit too far, and it can look a bit weird, right? It's a little bit too sort of like a marble at the end of it. You've gone a little bit too far. So I like to just paint the whole sort of thing personally. I know there's different ways of going about it and I'm just gonna suck up some of this actually because I've got quite a bit on there. All right, nice little layout. Now I'm using water, right, because basically water's gonna not let it stick. It's not got a medium in there that kind of sticks it to to our piece here. It's just water. We could probably brush this off when it dries, um, but we'll just leave that to just sort of dry a little bit. I don't like to let it dry too much, in all honesty. So I'll just clean my paintbrush off because um, it being a little bit wet, it just helps the um, other colours that we're going to put down here sort of stick to it a little bit better um, and this is where we start to build things up so I've now got um, next up we have the medium rust which is 3005 I'm going to put a little bit of this on my palette as well right, and I'm also going to get out clean my paintbrush I'm going to get some truck uh, sorry track rust which is 3008 Right, so we've got a nice couple of different levels of light and dark bits of rust. Now this is kind of starting to dry a little bit now. Let me bring you in a bit closer. Starting to dry a little bit now. It's not, shall we say, completely dry. It's um, just a little bit wet. And what we can do is this is where we start to come in, starting off with like our medium rust. And we can just start to dib and dab at it like so right and that little bit of wet paint left over from um, our light rust 
just allows it to stick a little bit. And as you can see, we're putting these dry pigments down now, so hopefully, maybe, I need a paper towel down, but just for you guys, for the camera lighting, hopefully that will work a little bit better. You can sort of see, you know, it starts to get a little bit of a texture to it. Right, and that's sort of like the cool thing about kind of putting the dry pigments down and you've got like a little bit of a light wet um, colour underneath it starts to give you a bit of texture. I'll just do this little bit just to sort of show you an example but already you can sort of see that coming along right and then we can sort of move up to say the darker colours which I'm going to sort of concentrate more at the end of the exhaust all right, and hopefully you can sort of see how nice and rusty that can start to look. And we're just dabbing on this, all right? But don't feel afraid to kind of go off and go, you know what, um, you know, I've covered quite a little bit of the light rust there. We can always come back and maybe dab in a little bit of the lighter rust in little spots, just to kind of bring them areas out. And as you can see, we're starting to get something going on quite nicely here All right so I've just done that little bit just to speed things up but as you can see looking quite cool and rusty which I already done one just here does need a bit of a matte coat on it because I have sort of um, sealed this in so I'll put a matte coat on that because you want rusty stuff to have nice matte coats. Now what I did do is, what you also want to do is sort of seal it in. I do find that Pigment Fixer, this is their 3000, um, MIG 3000. Uh, Pigment Fixer, I put it in an airbrush, right, um, about 20 PSI, and I spray it on as you would sort of sealing in a gloss coat. And as you can see, um, as I just showed you, that's what you sort of end up with. It does go a little bit sort of shiny, which is not what you want. So uh, once the pigment fixes on there, which I've, oh, you know, I'll quickly show you, um, because you, um, because you've put pigments down, it's a little bit sort of thick. So I do like to sort of just, you know, spray on a bit of a thick coat actually of the pigment fixer. All right, so you can probably see it's quite. I've sprayed this on quite wet. And I've done that so as the pigment fixer can soak into all those pigments and then it locks it in, right? And then I'll give it a matte coat later. I'll do more sort of spraying when we get to the spraying stage. But there we have it, some nice um, exhausts. So there is our basic sort of nice engineer. As you can see, for those simple techniques, I mean, there wasn't really much hard work. We've really sort of achieved quite a nice looking engine. And um, I, I think a lot of it does have to do with the kit parts as well. It really does give off quite a nice bit of lovely detail. Um, we could do more with this, which, which we might do um, sort of in, probably in episode two. We could put oil stains and fuel stains and stuff on it, but we'll, we'll see about that in episode two. But sadly, we have come to the end of this episode. Now in episode two, I am anticipating we do have our ejector pin marks, which um, need to dry. So in episode two, we'll be able to sand them back, um, scratch build a bit of detail here where we've um, had to remove detail to get the um, ejector pin marks in there but apart from that uh, we're done for episode one so hopefully i will see you in episode two and as always until next time my name is bob waldron this is genesis models and i hope you've enjoyed